Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Crosswinds Church More Than Sunday podcast. I am so excited for today's podcast. We have a, a special guest joining us, Dave Donaldson from City Serve International. Uh, I know so many of you around Crosswinds know Dave from his work with us. Uh, when he was with Convoy of Hope, uh, a lot of what we did in Haiti, uh, our Day of Hope at the fairgrounds, all of that came through through Dave when we were working with him in, in Convoy. Dave has now moved on to start a whole new thing that he's felt called to, called City Serve International, and he's going to tell us about what they're doing right now to meet the needs of people uh, in places like ours who are dealing with this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, real quick, before we listen to it, one thing I think I need to say, uh, just last week I interviewed Christine Beach Bamani from City Serve of the Tri Valley. Uh, both of these organizations have two very similar names: City Serve of the Tri Valley, City Serve International. They're very different things. Uh, City Serve of the Tri Valley is doing uh, relief work here in helping churches try to make a difference in, in the lives of their local their local neighborhoods. Here, uh, City Serve International is really a global project working with well churches as well, I guess, but the government and uh, other nonprofits to all come together to make big differences. Uh, you'll, you'll hear more about it in the podcast. So enjoy this. All right, everyone. Well, we are here with Dave Donaldson of City Serve International, and uh, you guys know Dave at Crosswinds. He, he's come up multiple times and, and spent time with us in church on Sunday morning. And uh, Dave was actually a big part of our early Haiti effort when we were working with him in Convoy of Hope. And uh, Dave, welcome to our podcast, our More Than Sunday podcast. Well, Chris, what a joy it is to be on your podcast and to be with uh, one of my favorite speakers on the planet. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. I laugh because I imagine it's part of your job to say that to every pastor you talk to. And you you talk to a lot of pastors. I, you, my wife will tell you, I can't wait to uh, go to Crosswinds and to hear you speak. Oh, thanks, man. I, mean I that. appreciate You're that. a tremendous communicator, leader. And that's one of the many reasons why we love Crosswinds. Thank you. Thanks. Well, so what, what I'd love to do today is hear a little bit about a, a number of things. Um, first and foremost, tell us about City Serve International, uh, which because uh, for a lot of our people, they, they know you most with Convoy of Hope, and, and they may not fully know about this new thing that you've, you've been led to do over the last few years. And then uh, I'd also love to just hear a little bit about your, your guys' response to, to what's happening with the coronavirus right now and, and all of that. So um, can you tell us about City Serve? Sure, just a little context. As you know, I, I had the privilege of working with pastors across this country like you. Yep. And I started listening to them. And so many shared with me how they felt overwhelmed, outgunned by the complexity and diversity of needs in their own community. Mm. And I really felt like the Lord was leading me to become more intentional about helping that local church deal with the brokenness and the daily disasters in people's lives. Yeah, yeah. And so, as you know, Chris, in 2016, I retired from Convoy after 20 years yep. uh, to launch City Serve International with a group of pastors, business people. And so we started in Southern California with these warehouse hubs Mm -hmm. that are filled with product from Costco, Home Depot, and other great companies. Yeah. Uh, we partner with World Vision, a great organization, and its storehouse ministries. And just over the last 14 months, we've been able to distribute through these warehouse hubs all over Southern California. Now in Arkansas, uh, we're opening up in Florida, as you know, in Las Vegas, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to officially launch City Serve Las Vegas next week, but over wow. thirty-five million dollars of product, wow. all channeled through the local churches uh, to meet the needs of their neighbors. Yeah. And as a result, they're building relationships with their neighbors, and churches are growing uh, spiritually mm. and numerically. I love it. So your heart in this ministry is to basically equip churches. Uh, through goods that have been donated to City Serve International, put in these warehouses uh, all over the, the country eventually. Right now, they're mostly Southern California, Nevada, it sounds like. 
Uh, where else are you? Florida. Guys? Yeah, and then Florida. we have okay. City Serve Arkansas with uh, a large group of the ARC churches, Association okay. of Related Churches. Okay. And the vision is that churches would come and they'd say, look, we, we think we can serve our city 20 miles away, 50 miles away, wherever they might be from that hub. And they can take some of those products, those goods back to their church. And the church is the hero. The church is a hero. And the church, as you know, is the best equipped to provide that continuum of care uh, yeah. to these people that re are receiving help. And most importantly, they get a uh, a family, a church yeah. family. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. It, it reminds me of a, a little bit of a, our, our our vision with our bunk bed ministry. I think I've told you about this this sleep in heavenly peace bunk bed workshop we've Love got out back. And and the idea is that that it's not just we're building bunk beds and dropping them off at people's houses, but we like to send a pastor from a local church in that neighborhood to go with so that they can sit there with the family and kind of be the hero, right? That they can they can get to know that family and build a relationship and invite them to church. And you're doing that on a much, much larger level. So pretty cool. Well, you know, I remember responding to one family that was, they were in a crisis and there was a news reporter there and, and we used the churches as staging areas and the reporter asked this woman, is this your church that is helping you? And she replied, it is now. <laughs> and it's amazing what can happen if yeah. the church is equipped, resourced, and mobilized to meet the needs of its community. Yeah, and that's so cool. That's so good. So it's a lot of fun. Dave, you were telling me before we started recording that, uh, well, and we know this about you, for, for the 20 years you were at Convoy, a lot of what you guys did, disaster relief, uh, and that's still a lot of what is happening with CityServe International. You were telling me there's some things that you you kind of like to tell the church in the middle of these kind of disaster moments. You've got these three Gs, and I asked, could you share those with us? Because I think they're so good. Well, there's a lot of talk about 5G right now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got three Gs. Uh, first is grieving, and God created us to grieve. And when you, you're losing uh, liberties, when perhaps you're losing your job, yeah, and God forbid you lose a family member or you lose uh, your home or parts thereof, uh, there is a grieving process, and we know God created us to grieve, and that's part of the healing. Jesus grieved. Right, right. The second is to uh, gather, mm -hmm. and the tendency is when we're wounded or hurt is to go and hide, uh, but yeah. that's the opposite thing to do. And the Bible says that the enemy prowls like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and I've spent a lot of time in Africa and going to safaris, the real safaris, and uh, to see these predators yeah, literally waiting for animals to get separated from the pack. And this is one of these moments where I love what you're doing with this podcast and, and the other departments where you are very proactive in reaching out to people in our church. And But I would also encourage us to use this technology called texting and, yeah, and yeah. Zoom and all the rest that God has blessed us with for such a time as this to encourage people. Yeah, You and yeah. I were talking before uh, this show that the word encouragement means to put courage in. Yeah, right. And A.W. Towser said that a scared world needs a fearless church. And mm. this is a moment. This is one of yeah. these moments where, you know, our, our talk, our talk is going to be measured. It's going to be tested by our walk. And yeah, this is as I hear you say this. Yeah. How fortunate are we that uh, we uh, live in a time where we can gather even when we're not gathering, right? And even when we can't be in person, we can still find a way to do this uh, through our technology, whether it's small groups or, or whether it's Sunday services. And then we can we can gather to serve in, in ways that, that maybe we can't be within six feet of each other or or uh, uh, even sometimes be in the same building. But but we can we can gather to serve in terms of putting our collective energy together right now. 
Well, the you know, you think about the Bible and how it got produced in mass. It was a result of uh, the church yeah. uh, using yeah. the Gutenberg press. And so here Is that we your are. third gene, Gutenberg? Uh, no, it's actually uh, giving. <laughs> okay. Okay. Giving. I didn't and know I, that Steve Gutenberg had anything to do after the Police Academy movies with uh, with the Bible being printed, but I guess no. Uh, I'm just hey, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll, I know, I'll I, defer I, that to you. I, I know about the Gutenberg Press. Sorry, go ahead. The third yeah. one was giving. Yeah, and so giving, and the fact is that God has invested so much in us over the years. I mean, abundance, you know, to give. And he, he's not surprised by this moment. He has not given us a spirit of fear, the Bible says, but a power, love, and a sound mind. He's invested that in us, that peace, and that sound-mindedness so that we can be that strength, you know, for others. And there are a myriad of ways that we can give, you know, through City Serve. Uh, we are taking this product. And even if it's just leaving it on the front stoop of mm -hmm. an elderly person, yeah, uh, th these are the kind of things that we're doing. So millions and millions of dollars of product that we've been storing, kind of like Joseph did during, mm -hmm. you know, during the feast, the feasting, if you will, in preparation for the famine. Yep. And so this is one of these moments where, you know, we're able to show the love of Jesus in a very tangible way. And so yeah. grieving, it's okay to grieve, uh, but you got to make sure it's balanced with the gathering. Don't get separated from your your biological family, but also your church family. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, giving, looking for ways, creative ways uh, to give in this environment. Yeah, that's so good. And if I give you a fourth G, sure. Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Just keep going back to Gutenberg every single time. <laughs> The Gen Xer in me loved watching Steve Gutenberg movies as I was growing up. So I, I, I think that might get you some mileage, well, Dave. I would also say, you know, <laughs> okay, I'll add that. But I, I would also <laughs> say, though, under giving is yeah. that in times, you know, where, you know, where it would be very easy uh, yes. for us to round the wagons and hide, right. mm -hmm. uh, but also to hoard, yeah. hoard God's resources yeah. And and I know in talking with pastors across the country, it's troubling uh, to hear how people are not tithing. They're not giving. And so thankfully, you know, we have the opportunity now we can give online. Yeah. And I, I can tell you, and I'm not saying this in, in any ego way whatsoever, uh, but my wife and I are going to step up. We're going to yeah. step up and give to Crosswinds like never before. Oh, uh, thanks, Dave. This is a yeah. moment. This is a moment for people that have been blessed mm. uh, to give out of that blessing to perhaps offset uh, folks that are so scared and that are yeah. really hurting because maybe yeah. they've lost their job or hours have been reduced. Right. And uh, so I think that's an important part to the giving. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, can you, can you share with us a little bit about what City Serve International is doing right now then with COVID-19, the coronavirus? How are you guys able to respond right now? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, we're working right now with hundreds of churches in Southern California. And as I mentioned, mm -hmm. we're resourcing them with product. We're getting from Costco, Home Depot, uh, we're also working hard to get medical supplies. Uh, for example, another one of our key locations is Dallas. Uh, the hospitals there were completely out of masks, uh, wow. gloves. Yeah. And so through our partner, uh, World Vision, we were able to provide you know, large U-Haul trucks of these mm -hmm. supplies. You can actually watch that on Facebook. It's powerful wow. uh, for a church to be yeah. delivering that to a yeah. hospital. <laughs> How about then, that? You know, as I mentioned, uh, one of the places hit hardest is Las Vegas. And mm -hmm. you know that city. I mean, yeah. it is built upon entertainment, but all of they that shut is- shut it all down? It's they shut the whole all down? closed down. Wow. And I talked wow. with one pastor uh, yesterday, 
And he said half his church is affected. And this is a large church. Yeah. And so we are in response to that. We're deploying uh, truckloads of product to warehouses that we've been able to work with this church and others to secure. And so we're going to help these families during this time of need. That's awesome. And and then in addition, uh, as you know, I work very closely with our government. Yeah. So I'm working closely with not only the White House, but our federal agencies. And then here in uh, the state of California, the same. And people would say, hey, that's politics. No, it's people. <laughs> I would say I, I, I should jump in. You've been doing that forever, as long as I've known you and before, and in a nonpartisan way. You, you, you've always been involved with any administration in helping out in every, any way you can. Well, I... I really believe that God is raising up modern day Josephs, Daniels, Esthers that can stand in the gap yeah. and and to make sure that we are partnering uh, with government. Fact is, there are wonderful people serving in government yeah. uh, and yeah. they need advocates. They need eyes and ears uh, for yeah. ways where they can use their influence and resources to make a, di a difference in communities like ours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So go on with what you were saying. So you, you, you're partnering with the government right now? and Yeah, so we, uh, and that includes even the appropriation of resources uh, that are yeah. tied to COVID and hoping mm -hmm. to steer that uh, to where it's going to areas uh, where it's needed most, uh, but also that, uh, that the church, you know, is part of this process. Yeah. And yeah. the fact is, people say, well, separation of church and state. Uh, I can tell you there's no such thing as separation of church and state if you have what the government needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the state's a little bit more likely to want to come alongside if, if you can somehow help. Is that what you're and, saying? <laughs> and you think about there's nothing like the church. Yeah. We have churches, yeah. you know, over 300,000 in America, and those churches shouldn't be outsourcing compassion. Yeah. They're the greatest opportunity uh, for helping these families during this crisis. And so, uh, yes, we're working with the government. We're working with national nonprofits uh, to make sure that, that the church receives these resources uh, because the church is in the same zip code as the need. Well, what I love about you and your leadership is you are helping churches partner with other big nonprofits and, and the government in a way that a church just could never really find the bandwidth to do on their own. And, and um, what an incredible thing. Uh, Dave has just moved up here recently to the Bay Area, moved back to the Bay Area, he and his wife, Christy. And so uh, you'll see them at Crosswinds when they're around in town and, and available. Uh, more than that, uh, I'm excited because I think it means uh, bringing more city serve international effort to the Bay Area in Northern California, and I've told Dave this. I'll just say it on the podcast. Our hope as a church is to be greatly involved in that as this thing continues to uh, make its way up the five. <laughs> well, it's our joy and honor uh, to be connected with Crosswinds and and you, Andrea and Jody, the rest of the team, and uh, we love this church. Love your you're what I call a kingdom diplomat, and you you truly know what it means to build community, not just you know crosswinds, and mm -hmm. that's a rare, uh, really a rare and precious gift, and just a joy uh, to be your friend and to serve alongside you, Chris. Thank you, Dave. What what is the website we can go to if we want to find out more about City Serve International or give to it? How, how, any of that? Yeah, CityServe.us. So cityserve.us, and uh, that has a lot of information. All right. Wonderful. Dave, thanks for your time, man. Oh, my, my, my pleasure. Thanks, Chris.